Hey guys, what's up? This is Jordan Crook with TechCrunch, and I'm here with Chris Poole, who is the founder of 4chan, Canvas, and now DrawQuest. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Great. <laughs> Good, I'm glad. Um, so why don't you tell people what DrawQuest is all about? Um, so maybe it helps to know a little bit about Canvas first. Um, so we worked on this app, a web app called Canvas, that had this um, drawing component to it where you could kind of remix um, and edit other people's images uh, on the website. And so what led to DrawQuest is we saw that a lot of people were having difficulty kind of getting into Remix and giving us this feedback that they couldn't, they could not Remix. Um, so we spent a lot of time working on the editor and trying to improve it, but what we learned kind of ultimately was that people were really just kind of personally struggling with this idea of like making art or being creative, um, expressing themselves creatively through digital tools. And so we created DrawQuest as a way to um, help kind of get people to, to kind of flex their creative muscles again and get back into drawing. Right. So essentially what we're doing with DrawQuest is you kind of lead people into it. In fact, I said once to a friend, kind of, I think the, one of the scariest things you can put in front of an adult is a blank sheet of paper and a pencil and to ask for them to do something with that. You know, be it um, you know, drawing, writing, you know, crafting, you know, origami, whatever. People like, have this very, most people don't view that as an opportunity to make something. They view it as this really kind of like intimidating kind of a, a prompt. When we built DrawQuest, we, we tried to answer kind of those two pain points where we give people a um, a, a daily drawing prompt, you know, in the form of kind of a question or a sentence or something like that. And we also give them a um, template where, you know, not only do we kind of give them some, some guidance on what to draw, but we also kind of get the drawing started for them. So we've got this kind of like, uh, you know, what's a nice top story with kind of like a, you know, Ron Burgundy uh, kind of character. <laughs> we give them this kind of area to, to just kind of... I mean, of it's almost like, like a trick. You're kind of tricking them. Because this is just a blank sheet of paper right here, right? Yeah, actually. It, <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, we... we like did, anything could go in there. It's incredible how just kind of giving people, getting people started really, I think, is very disarming. It really um, just kind of allows them to really focus on doing one thing and, and kind of doing one thing well instead of, again, thinking about, well, let me set up the ground in the night and, and this and that. Um, so what's the science behind like how you choose what goes in and what doesn't, right? Because it seems like it would be like the hardest thing to draw based on the prompt. You know, like there was a person in the what's, what's the news tonight, right? Mm. And there, you, drew, you drew out a night in this one. Um, I mean, are you guys putting a whole lot of thought into that or is it just... Yeah, it's surprising. I mean, like this was one of our kind of the questions going into the launch. We seeded it with uh, maybe four or five of these um, kind of templates, and, and that was kind of an outstanding question we had, which was, yeah, like what is going to kind of resonate um, with the community? And so, um, you know, we found that I think so far, I mean, things that are really kind of basic, I mean, really simple, um, and also appeal to kind of people of all ages and and, and kind of you know all, all backgrounds and and whatnot. Um, our users, uh, kind of the best sense that we can get in terms of the demographic, it's like you know, we, we get emails from, from kids, from adults, from uh, grandparents, and um, I think we actually have more girls using the app than, than boys. And so we're, we are pretty sensitive to, you know, with all of the templates, like we want to make sure that, again, like it appeals to both boys and girls and then people of all ages. Right. And all, you know, the, the community that we have is, um, you know, it's meant to be like very kind of family friendly. Uh, you know, none, none of the, the quests are, you know, kind of, you know, violent or risque in any sense. Again, we really want people of all ages to have fun with this and, 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 you know, just kind of be able to immediately kind of jump right into it. So how do you deal with, like, competition? Because I know that there's, like, a ton of, of drawing apps available, uh, especially on the iPad. Mm -hmm. And they range all the way from, like, social, having fun, like, doodly, to, um, you know, Sketchpad Pro and Paper mm -hmm. by 53 um, that are meant more for designers. Where do you guys see yourself, and do you have any plan to kind of capture that designer aesthetic, that, mm. that designer group of people? Because uh, there's no blank page here. Right. So, I mean, we spent a lot of time looking at kind of what else existed on iPad before we launched the app. And, I mean, the truth is, like, there are no shortage of really excellent tools. I mean, Papers is an excellent app, right? There's Ideas, there's Sketchpad Pro, I mean, Brushes. I mean, there's really, you can probably name like 10 or 20, penultimate. And, what we found though is that, I mean, there are really great tools, mm -hmm. um, but we don't think that we really saw anybody um, kind of capturing what we do, is, is, which is kind of, you know, not just having a great tool, but kind of breaking down the actual act of creation uh, for people. I mean, 
Um, you know, personally, when I use paper, I kind of just scribble around in it because I just don't really know kind of how to get into it. And I think when you look at a lot of the most popular ones, they all kind of have a, a specific niche that they kind of cater to. And the way that you use them is kind of transactional in nature. I mean, Penultimate is an app that I might use in class to take notes and then email them to myself. And, mm -hmm. and maybe if I draw for leisure, I use paper. If I'm a creative director, I might use ideas. But we didn't really see that many apps really trying to offer a community and just take uh, again, drawing something that most people don't do in their free time and make it accessible to people. And so, you know, we're not trying. I mean, if you look at our editor, um, you know, we're we're proud of it, and and we spend a lot of kind of you know time thinking about it um, in terms of you know what kind of you know tools that we offered and 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 whatnot. But you know, we're not again like in building this, we weren't thinking about kind of how do we outdo paper in terms of you know beautiful drawing tools. It was more how do we offer something that's really simple and kind of captures you know, 95% of the different things that people would want to do with it. Um, and again, it's kind of simple and accessible to people and not really kind of intimidating and, and not kind of like a pro kind of feature set. And I think we've nailed it um, as far as like, you know, we see people creating you know, really incredible, um, you know, from really simple kind of drawings to really, uh, you know, like Neo stopping soccer balls, like really <laughs> uh, you know, fantastic drawings. Very cool. So, I mean, your whole career has kind of centered around um, imagery. And something that you said to me earlier kind of resonated with me when you said, like, you know, we all grow up, like, writing and drawing. Like, drawing is something you do so much when you're, like, a little kid, and it's something that we just totally grow out of. I mean, you essentially had to build an app that did some of the work for someone. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, how do you feel generally about, like, the way our population sees artistic experience? expression and and what else do you have planned kind of clearly that's like a goal of yours you know yeah I mean yeah so I'm like uh, yeah, all of my projects have kind of been very visual I'm a very visual learner and so I think I kind of gravitate towards that and yeah when we kind of again like found kind of stumbled into this problem through working on canvas um, and kind of zooming out like it was almost disappointing how how I mean we're very inspired by kind of Sir Ken Robinson he's given these two really incredible TED talks and you know, he kind of points out that um, you were educating kind of children out, out of their creativity. I mean, very few people, by the time you leave high school or college, um, you know, yeah, like probably write creatively on a daily basis or draw or take photos or make music, unless you're doing it kind of professionally or unless you're really super passionate about it. I um, mean, various schools teach those I mean, subjects as kind of a primary. I mean, unless you're in a specialty school, I mean, you mm -hmm. know, all we hear about now is kind of STEM, STEM, STEM. And I think we are kind of losing our. Um, maybe the sense that, you know, the, how important the arts are. Um, you know, very few people make careers out of being uh, an artist, and so, you know, maybe less important. But I think to say that kind of creativity or being artistic isn't important is, um, is, is I mean, it's incorrect, right? Because creativity informs, um, you know, everything about, I mean, your work and your daily life, and, and people take a lot of you know, pleasure out of doing these types of things. So I think... And we consume it so much, too, right? Like, mm -hmm. you watch television, you watch movies. We are constantly bombarded by images, yet we can't really, there's no production anymore. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I gave this talk uh, earlier last year at this uh, little internet culture conference called Rafflecan, and I noted that, I mean, so they, had, they did three of them over the course of four years, and despite the fact that, in this case, like, internet culture and memes and stuff like that um, have just exploded in, in the past few years, right? Like. Um, you know, kind of, you know, different kind of like little cats and stuff like that. But, you know, also people consuming kind of, you know, internet content on, uh, or kind of internet culture content on, you know, Tumblr and Pinterest and, you know, those different kind of sites. There are no kind of shortage of consumers and curators, but there are kind of a, uh, there is a shortage of creators, right? Like the, the, it was kind of weird that the same number of communities that are kind of known for producing a lot of that kind of like meme content, like, you know, 4chan and, and, and Reddit um, and, you know, various forums and others, um, you know, we've seen an explosion of the people that are really enjoying that content, and yet the number of people actually making that content hasn't really changed. And I right. think the reason for that is because, again, like we have really great tools. Like there's no shortage of really great writing software, um, you know, and blogging software, and yet people don't write. I mean, there's no shortage of great drawing tools and graphic design tools, and yet people, very few people, do that, uh, you know, on a daily basis. You know, photography, music. I mean, it really, any creative medium you think about, it's it, it, it that problem exists. Right. Absolutely. I think that's a really good note to end on. So. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it. No, thanks for having me.